Hello and welcome to filing a DC SFRA flight plan in ForeFlight. My name is Rob McLeod. I'm the Flight Operations Team Leader. The purpose of this webinar is just to talk about how to file a flight plan in ForeFlight within the DC SFRA. So we all know the area around the District of Columbia and Washington, D.C. is very highly regulated. There's a lot of rules about flying in there, especially for VFR flying, which is what a DC SFRA flight plan is for. It's for VFR traffic entering or exiting or transiting the SFRA airspace. Now, an important thing to know about the DC SFRA flight plan is that it's a VFR flight plan. So you are um, you're operating under VFR rules. So you don't have to have an instrument rating to file this flight plan, but ATC is going to handle you like an IFR flight plan. So what does that mean? It means you're not going to have the standard VFR search and rescue services that you would in a normal VFR flight plan. But trust me, if you go missing in the DC SFRA airspace, they're going to come looking for you. But just know that. So if, if you're flying from outside the SFRA or you're flying out of the SFRA and you want those VFR services outside of that airspace, you have to file a separate VFR flight plan. The DC SFRA flight plan only applies to the area within the SFRA. But one of the most important things about this airspace is you really need to know what you're doing before you go into this airspace. The FAA is very particular about how things work in this airspace. Be sure to educate before you violate. Now the top picture may be, maybe he's just going out to admire the paint job on your airplane, but I'm pretty sure the bottom picture uh, he's not pulling up and admiring your airplane, and he's not waving at you to be friendly. You don't want to see either of these. So how do we make sure that we don't run into these situations? Well, be sure you take the DC SFRA course that the FAA has out there. It's actually mandatory, and you need to take it. You only need to take it once. So if you took it a couple of years back, you're still good. I have a link below, but it's pretty easy to find if you do a web search. Or go on the FAA website, look up DC SFRA, the, the course will come up here. You've got to register yourself with the FAA to get into this website, but it's not difficult to do. But by registering, you get credit for taking this course. Again, this course is mandatory and it explains a lot of the nuts and bolts procedures about what you can and cannot do and what to expect in this airspace. So don't try flying in this airspace without taking this course. I'm going to touch real briefly on the FRZ. So the FRZ is the inner area of the SFRA. First of all, don't try to file into the FRZ in four flight. We have protocols set up that will send you an error and not allow you to file in there. And the reason being is you cannot file electronically into the FRZ because only the only non-governmental flights allowed into the FRZ without a waiver are scheduled commercial flights in and out of Washington Reagan Airport. To get into the FRZ, you have to go through a bunch of security protocols, you have to have a PIN number, and you got to call Potomac Approach to file the flight plan and, and coordinate the whole thing. You can't do it through four flight. Don't try it. Um, and I'm not really even going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about that at all, how to go in there. Mostly, I'm going to talk about how to avoid the FRZ. So just stay away from it unless you know you have expressed permission to go in that airspace. The FAA has a lot of documentation and a lot of things on the web that you can download and print out if you want to that will help you in your flight planning. Over here on the left, it's going to talks about the gates that we're going to talk a lot about here. Uh, this is pretty handy to figure out what gateway you're entering on. The part on the right is filing instructions. I'm going to show you how to do it in ForeFlight, and the ForeFlight program will take care of a lot of this for you if you just follow the, the steps that I'm going to spell out to you. But, you know, find the resources, use them, print them out, become familiar with it. It's going to make things a heck of a lot easier for you. Now, I'm going to go over a couple of, couple of rules that you need to really understand to make the rest of this webinar make a lot of sense. The first one is all VFR DC SFRA flight plans must be filed within the DC SFRA. What that means is that this type of flight plan is only valid within the DC SFRA airspace. So if I want to fly from Mobile, Alabama to Manassas, which is 
Manassas is in the SFRA. I can't file a DC SFRA flight plan because Mobile is way outside the SFRA, so it will not accept the flight plan. Instead, what I have to do is I have to file a, a separate DC SFRA flight plan from my entry gate to my destination. So if I'm going from Mobile and I'm going to enter at the Fluky gate, I would file Fluky as my departure and Manassas as my destination. Conversely, if I'm coming out of Manassas and I'm going to be exiting the Fluky gate on, on my way to somewhere else, I would file my flight plan as Manassas as my departure and Fluky as my destination. If I'm cutting through the airspace, which is perfectly legal, you can do that, you file from the entry gateway to the exit gateway. Again, a DC SFRA flight plan is only valid within the SFRA airspace. So now that we have that down there, we'll talk about how we actually are going to do this in fourth flight. Okay, we're going to file two DC SFRA flight plans here. We're going to file one going into the SFRA, and then we'll file one going across the SFRA. What you're looking at right now is the screen for my iPad with the VFR sectional chart pulled up. The SFRA is designated by that solid blue line with the solid blue blocks on the inside of it, and the FRZ is the solid blue line with the blue hash marks on the inside of it. It's really hard to see. There's a lot of blue on this map. So what I like to do is I want to turn on my overlays and select the TFR. Now it's much easier to see. So. With that up there, let's go ahead and create a flight plan from Gordonsville to Manassas. There's my line, and very clearly I am entering the SFRA. Because I'm entering the SFRA, I have to file a separate DC SFRA flight plan from my entry gate to the destination of Manassas. Now, if I want VFR services outside the SFRA, I have to file a separate VFR flight plan from Gordonsville to my entry gate. But we have to know what the entry gate is first. You can use the knee board that the FAA provides, or let me show you how to do it in four flight. So just zoom in on where your line of flight is going to enter the SFRA. And as you can see, there's nothing here that shows you what gateway you're entering. It's just a bunch of sectional chart overload of information. Let me show you a trick. If you have this setting, select more, go to settings, and here in the middle, you'll notice where it says map touch action, and I have bring chart to front. So make sure you either have bring chart to front or bring chart to front with legends selected, one of those two. If you have that setting turned on, then you can tap on the screen and it will bring on the terminal chart, like the next chart on top. And think of it as a layer. Make sure when you tap on the screen that you're not tapping on an airport or on the edge of a piece of airspace or a restricted area because then it will bring up information about that instead. So I'm just going to tap on the area near this little lake here by Midland out to the west. So I'm just going to tap on that. Boom. Notice it's cleaned up the chart. And now it shows me that I'm entering at the fluky gate. That makes it really easy. So I know I'm entering the SFRA at the fluky gate. So what I need to do is if I want VFR for the portion of my flight from Gordonsville to fluky, I need to change my destination from Manassas to fluky. And then go ahead and file a normal VFR flight plan. But for the SFRA flight plan, for the DC SFRA flight plan, I actually have to file from my entry gate, which would be Fluky, to Manassas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Gordonsville, the place, and type Fluky. One thing you'll notice is that suddenly an error popped up. Four flights telling me I've only got 16 miles and 1,500 feet is too high. So I'd probably be in a descent anyways to get down to a pattern altitude. So I'm just going to select 1,500 feet. The error has gone away. But you notice that now it's taking me from fluky intersection to 
Manassas. You do not have to fly over Fluky to enter at the Fluky Gate. The gates are just named after points and nav aids that are nearby. That's just how they designated the gates. You don't have to fly over Fluky. I could come into the north, which would have been closer to my direct line of flight if I wanted to. I could file over Fluky just to make it easy, but you don't have to do that. You just need to make sure that you have Fluky as your departure point. And I'll show you how that looks. So now that we have Fluky in here, I'm going to send it to the flights page. Notice my departure is now Fluky. My destination is Manassas. That's good. That's what I want. But I have to change the flight rules from VFR because I'm not filing a regular VFR flight plan. I'm going to file a VFR DC SFRA flight plan. From there, you just file as normal. And you will have a DC SFRA flight plan in the system. And if you file a VFR flight plan from Gordonsville to Fluky, you'll have two flight plans in there. And you just deal with them like that. But that's how you file the SFRA flight plan going into the SFRA. Now, if I was going to go out of the SFRA from Manassas, well, here's a little trick. Just hit the reverse button. And you file it that way. So you file from Manassas to Fluky as a DC SFRA flight plan. And then if I was going back to Gordonsville, I would file from Fluky to Gordonsville as a VFR flight plan so I could have my search and rescue. Pretty simple stuff. All right, let's just say we want to go from Gordonsville to Bay Bridge, which is on the other side of the SFRA. So Gordonsville to Whiskey 29. There's my route. It's 99 nautical miles, so I'm going to want to be a little higher than that. I'll pick 5,500. That's fine. But I'm sure all of you are noticing that I'm going right through the middle of the FRZ. I'm not exactly the middle. I'm going through the FRZ. I don't want to do that at all. Don't want to go anywhere near that. So I'm going to have to adjust my route inside the SFRA to avoid the FRZ. So let me zoom in here. And you may notice there's a waypoint called Irons down there in the center. So I'm just going to use the drag and drop feature. So I'll put my finger on the magenta line and just drag it down to Irons. Make sure I have waypoints. There's irons. Select that. And I'm still pretty close to the FRZ. I'll be a little cautious. Let's take it a little bit to the southeast and put it over the Nottingham VOR. Select nav. There's Nottingham. And now my route has been adjusted. Okay. Now what I have to figure out is where am I going to be entering the SFRA and where am I going to be exiting the SFRA? Just like we did going into Manassas, I'm going to zoom in on this point down here. Sure enough, there it is. It's the BRV gate. So I'm going to change my departure from Gordonsville to BRV. On the other side for my exit gate, it's Paleo. So I'm going to replace Whiskey 29 with Paleo. Got it. Then I would file it just like we did previously. I would send it to the send it to the flights page. Make sure that I have my flight rules set to VFR DC SFRA and go ahead and file that flight plan. If I want VFR services before I get to BRV and after I get after I leave Paleo. I know it's, it's pretty short, but just hypothetically, I would have to file separate VFR flight plans on either side. It's not the greatest system, but that's the way it has to work. I hope this made sense to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us here at team at fourflight.com. The flight operations team would be more than happy to uh, have an email exchange with you, but if you want a phone call, we'd be happy to make a phone call and talk you through it. But it's really pretty simple. I would say give it a try a few times before you actually go and try to fly one of these. But it's not rocket science. I know you can all figure it out. So thanks for using ForeFlight. Be safe out there. And I look forward to talking to you about a new subject sometime soon.